We have arrived at the brew day. We are here, yes. So I've got the control panel operational. We've come in this morning. The temperature readout is 61 degrees centigrade. I dashed around the back of the tank to install one of Mr. Matt Francis's pump 3000s from Keck Kingdom. There it is, not its final position, but I thought I would bring it down because it would make an excellent recirc pump for the HLT. We can wire that in to the control panel at some point and hard plumb it. So the HLT will come with its own recirculation pump. If you want to send me another one, Matt, feel free to do so, buddy. I have to stand around for a while now and just wait a little bit for that extra 10 degrees. I imagine it'll be a little bit more once the recirculation starts. We have yeast ready to rock and roll. Some US05. This is good looking stuff. Best before date of 2019 on it, I might add. So we'll be brewing with that bad boy. Just have to weigh out a few hops. I'm gonna try and be as relaxed and as calm today as possible. I've not had the radio on. We're just floating through the day. We are gonna make an excellent beer on the first go. Hopefully. So I've just placed the thermometer on the heat sink and we can see that that's stable at 64 and a half degrees, which ironically is very close to mashing in temperature. But that means it's doing its job. It's not getting any hotter than that. I imagine the solid state relay is around 80 C, which it can handle. But as long as this heat sink's pulling out the heat, I think we're happy with that. And of course, this is twice the size. So when we've got the boil on, we should be able to pull twice the heat. We shall see also on that. But worst case scenario, I can mount a fan above, which I've done in the past, just to blow across the heat sinks to help cool them. It'll be nice to have a bigger chunk of aluminium, something with really high fins on there like this. But I'm happy with that so far. Okay, so now I'm just gearing up to add some of this Persip 15 to this bucket of 20 litres of water. Now the dose rate for this is between 3 and 10 millilitres per litre. And this Persip 15 is a highly concentrated uh, paraacetic acid, hydrogen peroxide and acetic acid mix. Basically star sand for big boys. But the trouble is, it burns like badly. So I'm just going to add all the contents. Like I said, I need between uh, 60 and 400 mil. 60 is going to be adequate, so I'm just going to guess this. That really is strong, nasty stuff. But it is the brewer's friend, so we're just going to rinse down anywhere where there's potential contamination to prevent us touching it later on and getting an acid burn on the fingers. Which we don't want, trust me, I've had it a few times before. So now we've got the diluted version of the peracetic acid, it's much safer. So what we're going to do is we're going to add this to the boil kettle and we're going to recirculate it through the brew pump, through the plate chiller or through the counterflow chiller and then back into the brew kettle. And then when we're ready to transfer out of the mash tun, we'll take this acid out of the brew kettle and we'll pump it into the fermenter and recirculate it around the fermenter until we're ready to fill the fermenter. And we'll just empty it back out into this bucket and just use it as a sanitizer for the rest of the day to clean any bits and bobs off that we need to as we go along. So here we are at the boil kettle. It's just a case. Of adding the sanitizer. Right, that's the pump connected, valve open. We'll close this one first. There we go. 
and then we'll let the sour tomatoes flow and we're full tilt. We're flowing. And you'll see that the flow is somewhat restricted due to the fact that it's going through the counter flow chiller but when we recirculate through the fermenter no doubt this flow will be hitting every single surface. We're not too worried here though because this is hot side of course we're going to be boiling and when we come to CIP the whole kit we're not going to have the counter flow in line so this will also be blasting across all the surfaces in the mash tun. Boiler should I say. Okay we've hit 10. What I'm going to do now is just switch the hoses round and we'll start filling the mash tun up from the bottom. We're going to underlet the mash tun so it fills up from underneath and then uh, we'll come back with a camera and have a look at the mash when we're finished. But I've tested the water temp with the thermo probe as well as the thermometer and it's pretty uniform so that Keg Kingdom pump has done a good job. I think we're going to go ahead and attach that to the HLT. Right, let's sw switch these cables around and put some water in the mash tub. I don't have a saucer, so I'm going to use the top of this cup. There we go, we've just got enough, enough liquid on there. So we're hoping that this stays yellow. Oh, you little beauty. I don't know if you can see that. But that's full conversion by my book. Beautiful. Alright, let's get rid of this. Well, the mash was a success. We've got four minutes left on it until we start running off into the boil kettle. The research working fine. Everything is tip top. I do need another pump at some point because uh, I've realised that, well mind you, I can probably use the Keg Kingdom pump, but we haven't tried it on on the Voloff yet, on the, not the Voloff, on the, on the sparge yet. So we'll see how it performs sparging a 400 litre tonne. But I'm confident. I am confident. the boil I'm just trying to fine-tune balance the uh, the PRDs so we don't overshoot and boil over so at the minute we've set it to uh, 75 well you can see what it's doing it's 
quite a full tank as well. I thought I was doing a half batch yes, today. It's quite a, quite a lot of beer in there. You see how close it's getting to the top? Is that going to drop back down again? Right, Gem's, Gem's going to hold the camera while we do the hop drop. You got it? Let's turn the screen around. So this is the first hop drop. We're down to 70% 70, 70 down there. Let's have a go. So this is uh, a couple of hundred grams of Ella. Doesn't seem like too much going into such a big boil. Look at it. Oh, is that going to come over? I reckon if we get a big hit with that. About 70. Yeah. Just listen to that bloody pure well pump. Unbelievable. And it gets worse. Well, pure weld fucking stainless. You sold me a fucking battery powered F1 car, not a pump. Listen to that. And then it stops. So I can report that the pump squealing was my fault because it was running dry. I had a valve closed. <laughs> anyway, disaster averted. I have found though that if I run uh, the feed out the bottom manway hole, basically the kettle drainage, it brings the trub so it does block it up and cause it to squeal. But the side takeoff that we finished yesterday is working perfectly. Um, I'm putting the water back into the HLT. I'll be keen to see how that holds temperature over the next few days. I don't think I'll be getting a brewing time though. I need to change some pipe work in some places, particularly recirculation pipe work and feeds. So at the moment I'm just recirculating the beer in the boil kettle whilst chilling it to bring the temp down. We're at 79 degrees now after the boil. And then once we're coming out of the uh, counter flow uh, around 18 degrees, then I'll start to push it across into the fermenter. I need to bring some one inch pipe work off the top of the fermenters and down the front so I don't have to go up there to connect any uh, spray balls or anything like that. I also want to have that running down on the front so I can connect a hose as a blow-off tube because I've noticed I've got nothing there, no vent there for a blow-off tube or an airlock or anything like that. 25.6 uh, is what we're going into the fermenter at. And uh, the fermenter's chilling as well. So she's reading 21 over here. The chiller unit's on. So the chiller unit's at nine point, minus 9.3 and drop in. I finished with all the water for the hot liquor tank so I'm pumping a bit of it back into the cold liquor tank because I think the cold liquor tank will have time to cool down even if it's a bit warm. Which reminds me, I do have to make some immersion coils to sit in there for the glycol to go into the cold liquor tank and I have to insulate the cold liquor tank and I have to light proof the cold liquor tank because it's an IBC it will let sunlight in there and we may potentially get algae growing in there so I'm going to keep the light off it if at all possible let's go and have a look in the kettle then see how much we've dropped don't have the chimney yet so I'm um, Improv. Oh yeah. Can you see the tide mark? It was way up there. 
and now it's way down there. <laughs> it's tricky with all the steam. I think this transfer is going to be at least an hour. So uh, I'll busy myself. I've finished all the jobs. I've just got the boil kettle to clean. So what do we do? Might put some music on or go and have a pint. No, no beer yet. Okay, we're almost finished with the transfer. This is sitting at 25, but I'm pretty confident that the chiller will get it down to 18 and a half before tomorrow. So I'm gonna pitch. Now I could just pitch straight through the CIP valve here, but I wanted to have a look at what level it's come up to. So we've got some SAF AL05. I'm gonna put in half a bag. Pretty good, come and have a look. Isn't she lovely? Hey, right. Let's get the lid. Let's get the lid back on it quick. Keep them nasties out. Don't want any of them in there. That feels good. Oh, I can smell that yeast. Good. And then we've installed a blanking cap to keep any flies out and allow the gas to blow off. I could put it through a bubbler and just connect a hose to that if I want to. I've got some peracetic acid down the bottom which I might just stick the tip of the hose into. Let's have a look in the boil kettle. Right, we're approaching the end of the transfer now. We've got the CIP spray ball ready to go in. And, well, yeah, you can see we're just about at the bottom there. And, as we say that, the tone on the pump has changed. We're empty. We have completed the transfer. So now it's just a case of isolating everything. Turn the pump off. But yeah, we'll disconnect the water, remove all this, back flush the pump with some warm water so as not to shock the seals on the pump. Worst thing you can do. So warm water back flush steadily and then we'll rinse all the kettle out and then we'll apply caustic on a recirc. We're back flushing the pump with warm water from the HLT through the chiller, through all the hoses that we've used today and into this bucket. Once it starts to run clear I'll add some caustic to it and then we'll drop the feed for the pump into the caustic to create a loop and we'll just recirculate through the whole loop for the duration of me cleaning out the kettle. I try to catch that. As soon as the caustic was going through the system, the whole thing changed colour. I wasn't quick enough with a camera. But you can see why we're doing the recirc loop now, can't you? Because that was running clear with just warm water. As soon as that cleaner goes in, woof, it brings, it strips the inside of this interior. And that's starting to pick up some power now, look. Just have to make sure that that's, that's clamped on. Right, I've moved all of this pump to this side of the drainage channel because we're about to remove the uh, outlet and let all the sludge from the boil kettle out. So all this, all this in here is effectively gunk. Drop that into the caustic and 
We'll let this out. Right, I'm going to go up top now with the hose pipe connected to the CLT and the pump so I've got more power than the mains and I'm going to blast off most of the gunk and then we'll put that caustic in the tank when it's clean and recirculate it to CRP the whole thing. Good idea. Right, I have a trial jar and I have a hydrometer, Stevenson Reeve hydrometer. So, we know what we were looking for. We were looking for 10.34. Let's get in on him. I can see we're a little bit high already. It's 0 0.1, 10.35, 1. 10.3, 1. 1.0351. And the temperature is, 24.5 degrees so that might lift the value slightly because it's calibrated for 20 degrees I've got a chart somewhere but I can't find it so all I want to do is just write down this value and we'll convert it another day well I believe it's customary to have a taste of the uh, trial jar sample so bottoms up folks cheers Oh, it's very malty. It's not too bitter off the bat. It's definitely down to temperature. Mmm, nice dry bite through the backbone. Yeah, this would be nice with some dry hops in it. And some alcohol, of course. Well, that was delish. That really is going to be a winner. I know it's going to be a winner. Right, a few final steps to clean up and then we'll reflect on the day, I think. So there we have it, chaps. Finished the brew day. I've got all the pumps running still because I'm just recirculating caustic around the boil kettle and the, uh, the brew pump. I'm quite happy how it went. We ended up being one gravity point above our target. And as I went through the brew day, I was sort of one gravity point up all the way through. So I'm happy with the boil off ratio. I'm happy with uh, my predicted gravities. I'm happy with the post boil gravities. The volumes look good. I'm estimating 400 litres or 10 firkins out of there. And uh, it was closer to a full batch than I thought it was. I don't think I'm going to get much more than 12 out of a full batch. Otherwise, we're going to end up with a boil over in the kettle. And to be quite honest, it's something I don't want to tackle. So I think I thoroughly deserve the pint, as have you lot for sticking with me this long. So join me in a beer, because I'm going up to the brew shed to have one right now. What a day. Cheers.